Hey, Mr. Wonderful here, and I'm going to watch this video that I've never seen before called Retiring Early on $870,000 in Arizona. Millennial money. Hey, listen, smash that like button. Do it now, do it again, do it one more time with feeling. In my early 30s, I came to the realization that I just could not spend the rest of my life sitting in front of a computer, working 10 to 12 hours a day, writing computer code or fixing problems. I just couldn't do that. I knew I needed to change. Not everybody can work like an entrepreneur has to work, which is 25 hours a day, every day of the week. Now, the reason you would do that is one day you might sell the business and have enough money to not have to do that anymore. But in the majority of the cases, you know, I've tried this too. I retired for three years. It's really boring. You actually are successful, sell a business, and you work even harder. How crazy is that? Some people like to work. This guy doesn't. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just pointing out that many entrepreneurs never stop working. They work till they're dead. Our rule of thumb when it comes to when we actually sell our investments and take money out is we only do it in an up market if we can help it, which is why we have that savings account there. And we'll sell money, we'll sell stock to get money in an up market if one, we need to replenish our savings, or two, we have a big purchase that we're planning to make in the near future. All right, so let me tell you the first problem I see with this. Um, they try to keep between sixty to $80,000 in their savings account. When they need money, they only want to sell in an up market. Here's bad news. Markets don't listen to you. They don't care what you think. They don't always go up. Sometimes they go down. And when you're trying to determine exactly when to turn into cash, you're trying to do something called time the market. I have never met anybody that successfully timed the market. You can get it right once or twice, but knowing when to sell and when to buy based on the fluctuations and the volatility of the market is really, really, really hard. So if your strategy is we're only going to sell in up markets, that ain't going to work. Yeah, okay, so their net, so and my, my point's being made. We just learned that their net worth dropped $200,000 because of the pandemic. No kidding. The volatility in the market in March, April, May last year was insane. And in ma matter of fact, in a matter of just 20 days, the entire returns of the market were, were realized. Some days the market went up as much as 9% in four hours. That's volatility. So a strategy that you're selling, you know, only in up markets isn't going to work when you've got volatility. Very difficult. Friends and some of my family were begging me to sell to get out of the market because everything is going to crash. But for us, we did not do that. We did not sell a single share of stock during the economic downturn. And since then, we have recovered about 150%. So that's $250,000, $300,000. yippee i -O -Ki -A. By not selling, even in the volatile times, this lesson has been learned. He did not try and time the market. Now he's up 150% of what he was at the low at. So that's basically how it works. Maybe the best way for this couple is to sell the same amount each quarter, regardless of what the stock prices are. Since April of last year, so we are now in a better position than we were before, precisely because we did not try to time the market. They sold their house, okay. And bought an Airstream. It was my first representation of freedom after work. We got to live in here and travel the country for a living. That was awesome. We would be traveling sometimes multiple days a week and did an entire trip from our home state of Arizona all the way out east to New York, up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and all the way back down. Working the little jobs we do or whatever from the road, we could really be wherever we wanted to be. We call our house the off-grid recession-proof house for just that reason. Almost no expenses. We can live here nearly as cheaply as, as we need to. We have no power running to the house. We have solar only. So that was a prepayment essentially, but we have no monthly payments there. We don't have to pay for water because we use water catchment. We don't have to pay for sewer because we have septic on site. And that was really attractive to us as we were trying to settle down from full-time Airstream, so full-time mobile life. Where do we go? How do we keep our expenses down so we can stay early retired? Okay, so it's a little bit of an eclectic lifestyle, okay? I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, it's, 
it's kind of like the wandering soul or almost being a hippie or being off the grid and all that. It's not for me. I don't like that. I, I prefer to be in a city where I can go out to a restaurant for dinner or whatever. But for this couple, it's working. Each to your own. But the key is they've kind of figured out a financial strategy for doing this. They're buying land at prices they can afford, a home that they can absorb the expenses of. It doesn't bankrupt them. The whole sell the house, get the Airstream thing was interesting for a few years. You can only do that for so long. It's not easy to do that when you get really old because you want to be near medical support when you need it. So it doesn't always work that way. But so far, so good. These guys sound financially responsible. Choosing a very minimal lifestyle in a house with almost no expenses, um, that was a very attractive proposition for us. And they're only paying $144 in property taxes. That's very, very low. I don't care where you are, that's incredibly low. So that's not a lot of expense, but that means you're also in the middle of nowhere. But if you're okay with that, that's great. I personally would find it very difficult to do nothing all day. Maybe they sustain themselves by you know, running their place and everything else, but I would prefer to be on the grid, engaged with people, working, keeping my mind sharp. In fact, there's lots of studies that say when you retire and you have nothing to do, you basically die. So that sucks. I think you have to think about a long-term strategy of pursuing projects that keep you interested, keep your mind engaged. All this research about cognitive health and Alzheimer's and everything else, a lot of it has to do with keeping yourself engaged. Healthy, good diet, exercise, and keeping the mind functioning. Now, what does that mean? Not retirement, something else. Maybe you retire from one job and you go to another. Maybe you retire from one job into a project. Maybe you pursue a passion like arts or photography or painting or something like that. But you don't sit around doing nothing. That's a really bad idea. That's how you go to zero very quickly. Despite the salary of a full-time job, I really don't miss much about that lifestyle. For me, early retirement is definitely worth it. To handle the pressure of saving a lot to retire early, you have to be okay with making some sacrifices, but yet your life can't feel like a sacrifice. If you think about it as what you're gaining, I like this guy. He's really pragmatic. He's right. You've got to sacrifice like crazy, but you don't want your life to feel like a sacrifice because that's living in hell. They don't. They've made this decision together. You've got to find the right partner to pull something like this off. You both have to be in sync because it's, it's pretty Spartan living. Let's face it. Like if you have that vision of the future, we used to take a walk every night with our dogs in Tucson and discuss like where we were at and how things were going and what we could see our future being like and traveling in the Airstream and having that like end goal and talking about it and keeping it in mind really made it so that it didn't actually feel like we were sacrificing. Well, it's a really touching story. Everybody's happy except the dog. I don't think retirement as a word makes sense anymore. It's just change in career. That's what people are doing. What is retirement anyways? What does that mean? So I'm gonna rate this couple, even though they're eclectic and they're different, I'm gonna give them a very high mark, 8.76. Why? Because they really had a plan. They knew what they were doing. They had a financial plan and a life plan. They called it retirement, but it's the way they wanted their lifestyle to go and they wanted to be able to afford it and they did it successfully. I like people that plan that way and execute on their plan. And that's exactly what they've done. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Make It. There's a lot of great information here, including me, Mr. Wonderful. And while you're at it, do not forget to watch Money Court, my new show on CNBC. What an amazing adventure making that show is. Everybody learns something and you can't believe what you're going to see. It's a shockeroo.